Welcome back to Smart Talk. You know, today is, and maybe you knew this, maybe you did not, but today is the International Day of the Woman, and many women will be described in terms like superheroes. It's true that most superheroes in comic books or movies are men, but a recent study showed that when a super is female, the impact on young girls is measurable. Catwoman, Black Widow, and Supergirl are known to most, and soon Carol Danvers, also known as Captain Marvel, will explode onto the scene. What will happen with Marvel's Mightiest Avenger when she makes her debut on the big screen? I, I assume that that, that is coming up uh, this weekend. Joining us to talk about uh, women who are superheroes, Dr. Melissa Whaler is Dean of Humanities and Sciences at Central Penn College. Dr. Whaler publishes on topics such as feminism, performance, and the explosion of strong female characters in popular culture. Dr. Whaler, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. If you have a question or a comment, give us a call, 1-800-729-7532. Send an email to smarttalk at witf.org. You can leave a question or a comment on WITF's Facebook page. On Twitter, we are at smarttalkwitf. Again, that phone number, one 800 729 Seven five three two. So, this is this this film, uh, Captain Marvel with a female lead, is getting a lot of attention. I mean, because it is one of the first women who is a superhero, at least playing Captain Marvel. But why else? Why why is the? It seems as though in popular culture, and even those not interested in pop culture are very interested in this. Yeah, so when we when we look at sort of the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, it goes back to Iron Man, and we have a lot of um, movies, a lot of hype that comes out of this, and for you know over a decade now, people have been saying, well, this is great, we love the Avengers, we love Iron Man, um, but where's the women? Um, and these kind of movies, I think, really ask us... Um, to have ourselves reflected in, in those kind of films is very important. And we want to um, see that part of us reflected. And when we look at Captain Marvel, I think part of the excitement about her is that she is, she's not Wonder Woman. Um, she's uh, something other than maybe we're mostly used to. I mean, we're used to sort of the big Avengers, we're used to um, the Justice League, and now we're getting this other female character in the guise of Captain Marvel. She is, um, I, she's a captain. She's military. She's got paramilitary experience. Um, she's not coming to us in a leotard. She's got a flight suit. Um, she she looks the very much the part, and she has a compelling backstory that allows us to sort of see ourselves reflected in that character. Um, I always say, you know, I would love to be Wonder Woman someday, um, but I'm not going to be an Amazonian. I'm not the daughter of a god. Um, I'm not going to become a goddess. But could I become, a, you know, a pilot? Could I get that kind of training? Absolutely, I could do that, you know? And so seeing ourselves reflected, I think, is so important. Um, and we haven't really had that, um, a female-led superhero film in this way. Plus, now that Marvel's owned by Disney, we're seeing it everywhere. It's The advertisement for this yeah, is just <laughs> unbelievable. There is a lot of hype <laughs> surrounding it. So traditionally, as I said in the introduction, yeah. superheroes have been men, with the exception of a, of a few. I don't know whether I'd call Catwoman a superhero or not. I mean, I think... Hey, complicated, I, complicated. It is yeah. complicated. She was a criminal, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, but anyway, and a nemesis to Batman. Yeah. But anyway, um, so because this is so non-traditional, yeah. will it be accepted? You know, and that's a really hard question. Um, we saw with the Wonder Woman movie um, as the first major production of the two Marvel DC universes as a female-led um, film, we really saw a lot of backlash um, leading up to after the film um, as well. And we're already seeing that with Captain Marvel. Um, Rotten Tomatoes had to change the way that they do um, their film reviews um, because it was getting what is called um, review bombed. So that's people who haven't seen the film that are going and reviewing the film and giving it bad ratings. Um, and we saw that with Wonder Woman. Um, we saw that with Star Wars, and we saw that with Captain Marvel. And mostly that's because we're now forefronting diversity in those films, and so those films became targets. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a very complicated question because we this representation is going to have backlash um, for a variety of reasons, right? People are, I love fans because they're so passionate, and I just want that passion to kind of um, be channeled in more productive ways than going and 
for the reviewing a film that hasn't even been released yet. Right, exactly. I mean, that, that, that drives me crazy when <laughs> someone has, because, I mean, we get we even get that from sure, time to time absolutely. when we talk about a topic. People make up their minds ahead of time yes. before they have yeah. heard the program, or yeah. in this case, seen the film. Yeah. You know, and you can't just base it on those commercials that you've seen. You're right. seeing a very small snippet snippet of that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that it's easy to say, and probably quite accurate to say, that there's some sexism at work there. But is it more sexism, or is it those who have grown up with a tradition, and you're changing that tradition? Maybe a bit of both. I think you can't divorce the two, is what I would say to that. And um, in terms of sort of the, the, the sexism, um, it's really interesting because when we saw Wonder Woman, it was very much like, we don't need this, this is a bad movie, you know, why does she need a standalone movie? With Captain Marvel, the conversation has become more coded, and that's because our cultural conversation around female superheroes has become more coded, I think. Um, it's not okay just to come out and say, I'm not going to go see this because this is a movie um, uh, with a female-led um, superhero. Now what's being said is, this isn't being marketed towards me. I'm not, the, I'm not their audience. Um, they don't care about me coming to see the film. So when you look at the reviews and you're on social media, that's what's coming out. What, what is really being coded there is, um, I don't want to see this movie because um, the woman is the lead. So again, it's this predetermination of the quality of the film, and it just dropped last night. Only a handful of people who went to the midnight screenings have even seen it outside of the pre-screeners. So the idea that everybody has all these opinions based on a trailer um, is, is ludicrous, right? And so there has to be something more there than what a three-minute trailer can show you. So I don't think you can really divorce the two, which is, which is a shame because I hope people aren't being turned away because they see these negativity uh, through the reviews and the advertisement. Uh, you know, one of the big things uh, about this, one of, the, one of the, the parts of it that will be so interesting and fascinating to watch is the influence it has on young girls and, mm -hmm. and, and women. Yeah. Uh, you study this all the time. Yeah. What kind of influence do you think that Captain Marvel with the female lead yeah. will have? Yeah, so um, my and I'll speak to my own experience. My own entrance, I grew up in a very small town in, uh, in a rural part of Pennsylvania. We didn't have a bookstore, let alone a comic book store. So the only times I saw any kinds of superheroes being represented was on the television, which I was very lucky. I grew up during the age of the animated television. Um, so uh, the original animated Batman, the original animated um, X-Men, all of these things were in, in sort of the cultural zeitgeist at the time. So I got to see a lot of female representation because that happened to be what was happening on television. So the X-Men is really famous for being very diverse. You have Storm, you have Rogue, you have Jean Grey, and uh, these were the women that I grew up thinking about. Um, there, you know, Wonder Woman wasn't really available to me in my small town. And I, some of your listeners, especially if they're younger, are thinking, you know, how is that possible? How did you not have a, you know, a comic book store or a bookstore? Because now you can order anything you want. And there was no Amazon. internet, right? Yeah, so there was yeah. nothing. There was just the TV and me. Um, and so uh, now, that you, now that there is access, that's wonderful for young women. Um, so, you know, you had to kind of, at, for, for, you know, fans of my age, um, especially in my geographic location, you had to kind of parse out the women characters. Um, you had to say, okay, this, you know, here's one here, here's one here, and you kind of had to put them together. You know, it's my hope that y women who are going and, and taking young girls and dads, I hope the dads aren't just taking the boys to these movies. I hope they're taking their daughters um, and sharing that part of this, this culture with them um, because it is powerful. I went to go see Wonder Woman when it came out, um, and I've watched it since with women. And the, the energy in the room was like, oh my gosh, you know, we can go and kick some butt now. Like, <laughs> you know, I, let's find some Nazis, let's go beat them up. Um, and I think that that's really important because, you know, if you grow up in your whole life and you're being told only if you have these very special circumstances, only if you are the most special person can you have these kind of powers, um, that's a really hard lesson, whereas, you know, um, men and young boys are getting it from almost every angle. They're seeing themselves and their stories and their abilities reflected everywhere they go. So, I, you know, my experience has been that was a way for me to see myself and what I could become. Now, of course, I'm not going to walk into some terrigen gas anytime soon and get superpowers or have some sludge jumped on me. Um, but it was you don't know that yet. You're I not out of the studio. <laughs> you know? I don't know what's happening in the studio. I know you guys are doing some renovations. Is it a superhero chamber? Um, and I think that that's part of it. Like seeing yourself reflected is just so important. That representation does matter. And I know that's become sort of a flip thing to say in popular culture. Um, 
representation matter, but it really does. Um, and I think the next fight for people who want to see representation is not just, I love Wonder Woman, I love Supergirl, um, I love Jessica Jones, I love Captain Marvel, they're white women. I would love to see additional diversity brought to that, and not in the form of aliens. Um, I get that I get that all the time. Well, you know, there's aliens, there's, you know, pe beings who exist beyond, you know, our spectrum of ethnicity, race, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Love it, love every part of that. Let's also see the people that, you know, walk down the street the same as I do every day. Um, I can't help thinking, though, about Black Panther. Yes. Which yes. a lot of the same things yes. were said about Black Panther yes. when it came out and, you know, became one of the most honored movies over the past year yeah. uh, that, that there is. But a lot of what you're talking about with diversity, yes. a lot of these things were said about Black Panther as well. Yeah, and, you know, this whole idea that things can't get made because they don't have an audience, I mean, that's long been an excuse. Well, we, you know, um, we don't want to make a, a film with a diverse cast because that that population that it's representing doesn't go to the movie theater. Um, we don't want to make a, a movie with um, a female superhero because women don't go to the theater to watch superhero movies. It's all these narratives that get creative about stereotypes, about who's watching and who's really consuming these things, and they're wrong. I mean, you know, Wonder Woman blew out the box office. Um, I, I highly suspect Captain Marvel will do the same. I have a feeling will too. Yeah. Um, and same thing with Black Panther. And so the, this narrative in Hollywood and this, this narrative among fandoms that if you have a diverse cast um, that it's not going to be successful, I think we're seeing time and time again. The question for me really is when do we have to stop proving it? Um, when does it become this, this narrative that we've created just simply um, and now we don't have to constantly be coming over these barriers to get to having movies with representation. Um, so really trying to unpack that, that narrative that seems to be false with each new movie that has representation and is really popular. Now, you know, something you said a little bit earlier struck me. Uh, you said about the, this Captain Marvel, is a, a superhero, a woman that is not in a leotard. Um, let's face it. Superheroes, even the men, yep. well, you know, they're built pretty well. Yep. They're you know, very attractive <laughs> men Certainly. for the most part. The women, women have always dealt with this, have the people looking at their appearance. Yeah. I mean, I think back to the Wonder Woman TV series, okay? Of course. Now, I was a teenager. Of course, yeah. And my first thought was not about the, the storyline yeah. going there, I have to admit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, and, but as you said, now this Captain Marvel uh, has a flight suit she on. She does, yeah. Not exactly, you know, being portrayed like uh, it, women have been portrayed as superheroes or part of those stories in the past. Yeah, and you know, now she's not unattractive. I will oh, say that. No, absolutely not. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that that's always been uh, an undercurrent for us when we study these these um, characters because you have to look at the whole trajectory, right? And and we do have women who are being, once they enter the canon as superheroes. Now, early on, of course, they're in the canon, but they're in there as love interests, um, victims to be saved. They're not characters, they're very- Lois Lane. Yeah, like a Lois Lane character. Mm -hmm. Always a Lois Lane character. Um, then you get Wonder Woman, right? And she comes out in this leotard, and is it a, there's been a lot of conversation about how appropriate or inappropriate <coughs> it is when the new costume got created for the new Wonder Woman. It's, it's not dissimilar from the um, Linda Carter years, right? Um, but what's interesting is, is when the costume designers looked for to create that, what they did is they went back and they looked at what um, Greek warriors were wearing and tried to simulate it so that there was um, theorization behind the costume, not just skimpiness for skimpiness sake, right? So not just attractiveness for attractiveness sake. And it is important to recognize that comic books, the history of comic books is they were written mostly by men, mostly for men. Um, and so the costuming, you know, is is in line with that, um, make them attractive and so that people will buy these things. And uh, frankly, the Wonder Woman costume from the 70s isn't even the worst costume out there for women. Um, there was a really bad time in the comics in the, in the 90s where um, they were creating um, adult lines for the comic books, for the, for the men, for the, for the young boys and the teenagers who got older who still want to read comic books. The costumes from the 90s get uh, incredibly more, um, I would say, inappropriate. Now, what is important, I think, when we talk about superhero costumes is not that, you know, do the women often have, you know, certain areas exposed, your breasts, your buttocks, yes. 
Um, and I have, and, and what people say to me is, well, superhero wears underwear. Uh, Superman wears underwear on the outside of his leotard, so he's also poorly dressed. Yes. The difference is, is when we see female superheroes is that he, um, that men are, their, their costume shows off their physicality, um, whereas women, it shows off their sexuality. And that's yeah. really a huge difference. So men will have tight leggings, whereas women will have bare legs. Men will have tight um, shirts on, but women will have no shirt or, bare, or bodices, as you see with Wonder Woman. So yeah, the, the issue of superhero costuming and, and Supergirl, um, for those of you who watch the CW show, she does a whole montage where she tries on different superhero costumes, one more skimpy than the next, and she's like, oh, how could I wear such a thing to go fight crime? She's like, this would fall off of me. Um, and so they make it into a joke, but it is a reality. Some of these costumes you would never go out and fight crime in because they would fall off of you or something would fall out. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, we only have a minute or so left and uh, in, really enjoyed the, this, this conversation. So for those who are going to see Captain Marvel yes. this weekend, what should they be thinking about? What, what, what would you like people to take away from it? I, I just want, I want people who go to it to just really enjoy it. And if this is your 50th superhero um, movie or event, I want you to go in there and I want you to see something new, something fresh, maybe something different than what you previously experienced. If you have never seen a superhero movie, don't let that stop you. Go out, because this movie, I think, will be a great entry point into the universe, into the fandom. Um, come join me, be a fellow nerd, geek, um, <laughs> whatever you claim is your title, um, and, and enjoy that experience. And please, if you're going, um, take friends, and make it make it a, make an experience that is shared because seeing a powerful woman um, on the screen is such an important and unfortunately all too um, rare occurrence. So, you know, go into it, enjoy it. It is a superhero film. Um, parts of it, I certainly take some of those themes seriously, but also it's fun and it's okay to have fun with things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Melissa Whaler is dean of humanities and science at uh, sciences at Penn, Central Penn College. Dr. Whaler, thank you very much for being with us Thank today. you for having me. Sounds like we have a lot of people who uh, could be having some fun by going to the movies this weekend as well. So uh, enjoy yourselves. Whether you're going to the movies, whether you're going to uh, the State Museum or the, uh, some of the other state uh, historical sites for Charter Day, which are free this weekend, uh, be sure to have a good time. Coming up on uh, Monday.